Today, we are gonna be testing out these three Tamron lenses on the Canon R6 Mark II. It'll be fun. Hi, I'm Jared Hoyman with VisibleTour.com and welcome to a battle that I really have been wanting to do for a long time and that is taking the three Tamron lenses that have a nice zoom and seeing which one would fit the best. I've got the Tamron 35 to 150. It's a variable aperture of 2.8 to 4, so 2.8 at the 35 millimeter, and then it gently progresses to f4 once you get to 150. So probably around 105 to 150, you're at f4 with this. And then we've got the 70 to 200. This is a constant aperture of 2.8. This is a sought after lens when it comes to portraiture, landscape, it is just an overall really nice focal length. And this lens is a G2, which is Tamron's top of the line lens. So in Canon world, L-series glass is the best. In Tamron world, the G2 is the L-series of Tamron. So this is really nice. The 35 to 150, unfortunately, is not a G2 quality, but it is an awesome lens and serves a great purpose. Then we have this ginormous one, this is huge. I have never shot on anything this size in my entire life. This is a 150 to 600, F5 to an F6.3, which actually isn't a huge change in aperture. It stays pretty good. Um, and this might be a better alternative than the Canon EF one, because this one you can pick up for around 12 to $1,300 and then a lot less used market. It is heavy. We will see that in the test today, how it handles on my tripod. You obviously have a collar here. This collar, you have to use it. The collar on the 70 to 200, I've actually shot without it and shot with it. I do prefer with it, but I've also been able to keep it steady on my tripod, so it's not as bad. This, on the other hand, you need to put it on the collar. This thing is super heavy. The Tamron 35 to 150, well, this thing is actually pretty light and reasonable. It also has vibration compensation, which is like image stabilization that the Canon has. This is called VC. And I like it. I actually own this one. These two I do not own, and I wanna give a shout out to Camera Corner Connecting Point for loaning these out to me for the last couple of weeks so I could do these tests for the channel. I am super impressed by these. Um, I didn't realize how impressed I would be at these focal lengths. This one is super impressive. Heavy, but super impressive. We're gonna be going outside. I'm gonna do photos of each one with each overlapping focal length. So that way you can see what it looks like and how they compare to each other. I'm also gonna share a link below for the raw photo so you can download them and look at them yourself because don't take my word for it. There's a lot of compression when it comes to YouTube and a lot of subjective behavior and everything's not always gonna be in focus. I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna show you that I'm doing my best because I'm gonna be recording it on the Atomos Ninja V+. Now, when we do this test, the 70 to 200, although the VC, vibration compensation, image stabilization, is gonna be turned off, it's gonna show in the menu that it is still on. It is not, I've tested it out several times. For some reason, the Canon R6 Mark II, and maybe this is other RF bodies, do not register showing that this is off, but there is no IBIS, so nothing is moving as it's going, and when I do turn it on, it does operate. But for some reason, it doesn't show accurate on the menu, and that's something to be aware of if you're shooting with this and you have image stabilization turned off, uh, and you want it on, just make sure and just look at those little buttons on the side. And I will give you my final decision between these three lenses. Again, I own the 35 to 150, love it, enjoyed it, have had it for about nine months, but I will tell you my opinion on the 70 to 200 and the 150 to 600 and which one, if any of them, would be best for you. All right, let's go shoot it up. Or photograph, maybe that sounds better. Let's go photograph something. Okay, we're gonna start out with the 35 to 150, then we're gonna do the 70 to 200, and then the 150 to 600. So on the 35, we're gonna do 35 millimeters, 50 millimeters, 85 millimeters. 
We'll do 105, then 135, and then 150 for photos. I'm gonna replicate those focal lengths for the 70 to 200 and the 150 to 600. Um, so you can see the comparison with that. The framing is gonna be as good as I can get because when I get onto the 70 to 200 and the 150, to 600, I'm going to have to use the lens mount because they are very heavy lenses and I don't want it moving or altering during the shot. I do have this on a two second timer. That way when I click the shutter, I can step back and there's gonna be no shake. It should be a pretty still photo. All the raw photos are gonna be in the link below. So feel free to download those, compare them, and then that'll give you a better idea of which lens is best for you and you can make that decision. I'll be curious of any input that you have. Make some comments below in the comments below, right? That's what it's called, the comments below. Okay, so we are starting out at the 35 millimeter. So everything is in focus right now. I am going to hit the shutter. And I'm trying to stay to one stop above exposure um, for each of these shots. So let's move over to the 50 millimeter. The nice thing about the Canon R6 Mark II and the Canon R7 is on the right side of the screen here, you can see as I progress, it tells me the exact millimeters that I'm hitting. And I'll try to get as close as I can. There's 50. And to make sure, I'm gonna zoom in. And I'm gonna manually focus what I can see. And if it looks a little soft, it is a digital focus. Now remember the 35 to 150 is like a regular lens in the Canon lineup where the G2 series, the 70 to 200 and the 150 to 600, those are supposed to be ultra sharp. So this shouldn't be as sharp as the 70 to 200 or the um, 150 to 600, but it is pretty sharp still. So let's um, lower shutter just so we can get to that one stop ahead and We'll click, so we're at 50 millimeters. All right, that is 50 millimeters. Now let's go move over to 85 millimeters. All right, we are at 85 millimeters. I say roughly 85 because this isn't gonna be perfect science here. And now we're one stop ahead. Okay, and there's the two second timer. All right. And that is the 85 millimeters. We'll go to 105. And now we're at the F4. And it appears to be pretty sharp at this focal length. And we'll lower the shutter a little bit to two, 1 200th. There we go. All right. All right, 135. Let's check our focus. It's very shaky. And that's the thing. When you are doing these zoom lenses, the more zoomed in you are, the more shaky these things become. There we go. Let's go to 150 millimeters, not that much. So what I'm gonna do for the next tests is since there's not a big difference between 135 and 150, we're gonna do 105 and then we're gonna jump to 150. Um, so when we do the 70 to 200, we're going to do the lowest possible, which is the 70. Then we're going to go to the 85, um, just so you can compare that in the photos with the uh, 35 to 150 at 85. And then I'm going to do, um, uh, we'll do 105. And then at 105, we'll jump all the way to 150 from that and then so on, because we're going to be progressing up with the 70 to 200 since it obviously goes the 200. So we'll zoom in just a little bit here just to make sure the focus is still solid. Okay, we have the 70 to 200 on right now. This is a 2.8 constant aperture from 70 all the way to 200. Um, so I shouldn't have to change the ISO or the um, shutter speed at all. It should stay pretty good at that one stop ahead. Um, so everything you see is good. I will probably then shoot at F4, just so you can do a comparison with the 35 to 150 with this and see how sharp it is on that when you download those photos below. Here we go, we'll do the one second timer and we're focusing on the windows right there. So this is 70 millimeters. 
Just so we're consistent, let's go to 85 millimeters. The closest I can get is 86 millimeters. And here we go. And so we are 86 millimeters. It's the closest I can get um, when zooming into 85. All right. 105. And it's either 103 or 107. Let's just do 107. That looks actually pretty here. Let's pretty good. I am going to put the shutter speed down a little bit just so it is that one stop ahead. Um, it's based on the composition of those windows. So here we go. This is equivalent to 107, close to the 105. I'll go back a little bit here. So it looks like 149 is the best I can do on that. 1 3 20th, 2.8, 400 ISO. All right, here we go. So 150th. All right, we're gonna jump all the way to the 200 millimeter, 2.8. So 150 to 200, just to give you an idea of what that looks like. So 149, 200. It's really not that big of a difference in the whole scheme of things. I'm gonna lower the shutter a little bit to 1 200th. All right, we are at 200 millimeter right now. So 1 250th, 2.8 and an ISO of 400. And our focus is right there on the window. And so we are going to hit the shutter. And there you go. We've got, uh, that's pretty awesome actually. Man, 200 millimeters is pretty nice, especially at the 2.8. Now look at the comparison when you download those um, onto your computer of the 150th 2.8 and the 150th F4 on the 35 to 150. It's gonna be a big difference of how much light is let in. And honestly, you can get both these lenses very similar in price in that used market. Obviously the 35 to 150 is not sold anymore, so you have to buy it used. There's enough 70 to 200s out there that you can get a good deal sub $1,000, which is really good for how sharp you get with this lens. Okay, let's do F4 for all those focal lengths, and that way you can compare it with the 35 to 150 when you download those photos. So let's start over at 70. Let's change it to F4. All right, 160th F4, ISO is 400. And there we go, we're at 70 millimeters. Let's bring it to 85. The two second delay is really awesome because then any little micro jitters that you may have, even though we're at 160th, we're zoomed in quite a bit and you still could have some issues even when you're using IBIS. All right, let's go to 105, which the closest we can get is around 107 here. All right. All right, let's go to 150. All right, and then let's go all the way to 200 at that F4. So the F4 is actually pretty sharp on this lens. And so 2.8 is great, F4 is great. A lot of people do portraiture at 5.6 in a studio, which would get even sharper, but you'd probably get some good sharpness at 5.6 um, across the range on the 35 to 150. But again, it is not a G2 series, which is kind of like the L series, but for Tamron. So let's go to the 150 to 600. This thing is going to have a big range with its aperture, so we're going to have to adjust it quite a bit. Um, I'm probably going to have to start that ISO a little bit higher to keep it equal, um, but uh, that one is going to be a beast. So let's get that on here. Okay, um, <laughs> you can't get past it. When it comes to the 150 to 600, first of all, it's not a secret. You can't just walk around in the street with this thing. <laughs> it is ginormous. Also, I could not put it on my tripod mounted to the camera. It was, it was falling over. It, it was unstable. You have to mount to the uh, collar of the lens. So that's a must. Where the 70 to 200, I did get away without it being mounted. It would have been more stable um, when I was adjusting the manual focus, not when I clicked and had the shutter do a two second delay, but if I were to do something where I needed to shoot it immediately, then definitely use the collar on the 70 to 200. And for sure, for sure you have to use it 
<laughs> if you're not doing handheld, you have to do it on the 150 to 600. So this is a variable aperture. Um, right now it is F5, it goes F5, and then as you go up the focus, or up the, uh, not the focus, as you go up the, um, the millimeters here, um, it will change to eventually where it ends at 6.3. So this is, I came in, I can't even twist it in one shot. Let's try it. So it's at 150. This is what it looks like as it goes. So it starts at F5, goes to F6.3. So it's pretty good. 600 millimeters. Um, this thing is sharp. It's on autofocus right now. I'm going to take that off when we do the photos. But this is, what a zoom. What a zoom. So the other one ends at... 200 millimeters so let's get down to 200 so the difference between 200 and 600 look at that <laughs> you're not going to do headshots on this i mean i wouldn't i would not do headshots on this <laughs> it would not look good um, but bird photography animal um, this is definitely a great lens and it's super duper sharp i've been shooting with this um, for the last couple of weeks playing around with it and it is it is excellent quality and for the money if you don't mind that extra little girth for the adapter um, to make the ef rf compatible um, this is definitely worth it and maybe a better option than getting that 100 to 500 even though you get a little bit wider this thing is still super sharp and you're going to be shooting outside anyways so you should have a decent amount of light um, also if you're shooting on the r7 you can use a speed booster and you can let more light in and have more shallow depth of field so that's an option too all right let's start here at the 150. now i will tell you when i zoom in and i'm using the manual focus ring right here it is a lot smoother than the um, 70 to 200 and a lot better than the 35 to 150. The 35 to 150 manual is horrible. Um, I'd love to say that it's not bad, but it is horrible. I'll tell you more about that in just a little bit. But this 150 to 200 is just super smooth. Now, the zoom ring is not. It is very stiff and um, hard to get moving really easy. It's not fluid at all. So we appear to be in focus right there. So we got the two second delay at 150 millimeters. ISO noise of 1250 is not going to make a huge difference. Um, I just want to be around that 1 200th because we're going to have to start decreasing that in just a little bit here. So here's 1 50th. Now let's go all the way to 200. So we're at F5 still at 200. All right, we're going to jump all the way to 300. That two seconds does make a big difference with jitters. 400. All right, now we're going to jump to 500. Let's do the focus assist here. Okay, now we're gonna jump all the way to 600. Focus assist. Awesome. So if I were to do kind of a, wow, this thing weighs a ton, a, a zoom in real quick, it's out of focus, and then bounce it, yeah, it's fast. It's a fast focus. And that's what you're getting with these G2s. They are the fastest of the Tamrons for their autofocus. Yeah. So again, 150, way back here, bring the ISO there. You're at F5, then it jumps, 5.6, stays there for a while, and then 6.3, around that 400 to 600 there. So not bad. Now this lens you definitely wanna use outside, unless you're in a studio, and I don't know why you would ever use this in a studio. Um, then maybe you could do it, but you're going to be doing this outside. The 70 to 200 is probably the most versatile. Great outside, 2.8, great studio lens, um, lots of options with it. It really is a good lens.
We'll talk about that more in just a moment. Okay, I'm gonna bring you down into the studio. We're gonna discuss all three of these lenses at their focal lengths. I'm gonna explain my views on each one, which each one would be good for, and ultimately, which one, if I can only pick one, that I would choose because there is one. Be sure to download these photos as well so you can look at the raw files and play around with them in Lightroom or Luminar. And um, you tell me in the comments below which ones based on those raw photos that you like the best. Before we go into the studio and I give you my final thoughts, I wanted to bring you into Lightroom where we're gonna compare the 35 to 150 and on the right side, this is the 70 to 200. I just wanna do a quick comparison at the 105 millimeters. Um, so on the left side is the 35 to 150 at 105, and although it's not framed perfectly, this will kind of give you an idea, and you can look at the uh, contrast here. The 70 to 200, the contrast is just so much nicer and pleasing. It reminds me of L-series glass on the Canon, and so the G2, you can tell, um, you get onto the roof here, and there's a lot more contrast over here on the roof than there is on the uh, 35 to 150. And this is wide open. So right here you are looking at um, 2.8 and here you're looking at um, 3.5, I believe. Find out in a second, no, 105, F4. Yeah, so actually we are, 105 is F4 right now. That is, that is crazy because it should be a little bit sharper than this. And then when you look at the um, out of focus, um, obviously this looks a little bit more focused being F4, where you can tell there is more of a blur. Um, let's get out and then just looking at it, you can look at the colors and the contrast is greater on the 70 to 200. All right, and here it's at 107 at f4 that's the 2.8 here and so we'll go in and you can just tell the contrast is just uh, a lot more detailed oriented and appealing than it is here it is softer so the 70 to 200 is noticeably sharper um, let's go look at the roof here and you can just tell the detail in the roof compared to the roof over here on the 35 to 150. I also wanted to bring you into the 200 millimeter on the 70 to 200, the 2.8, and just look without even zooming in how sharp this is. And then the out of focus of this basketball hoop, this is the house behind this house. So this is what the compression looks like. It's pretty good um, because the distance from the front of this house to right over here is almost a block. It's at least a half a block. Um, and that's, that's a good looking compression right there. And then we zoom in at 200%. And I mean, just look at that detail and that sharpness wide open at 2.8. It looks really good. The F4 at 200 millimeters is on the left side here. The 2.8 is here on the right. So when you go up to F4, man, it cleans up so much sharper. I mean, look at that detail and then compared to the 2.8. And you can tell this is the 2.8 because the background blur here is greater than it is here, but the sharpness is so good, but the 2.8 sharpness is amazing as well. And here's the F4 again on the left side on the roof and the F2.8 on the right. It is sharper, you can tell, but not by a lot. It still stays really sharp at the 2.8. Uh, here's the 300 millimeters on the uh, 150 to 600. Um, it's pretty sharp. It is at 5.6, but that is just a beautiful image. Here's at 500 millimeters at 6.3. So zoom in and just super duper sharp. And then finally 600. And just look at how sharp this is at 6.3. The details are they're great <laughs> it is really good it is an iso of 1600 so know that outside on a cloudy day you still will have to boost your iso to get a decent shutter at 1 100th which honestly you're probably going to want a lot faster than that if you're off of a tripod but this is a sharp image as well 
So just to reiterate, I do own the 35 to 150. I've been shooting with it for the last probably eight, nine months, and I've enjoyed it. It does work well on a speed booster with my Canon R7. I love the versatility because on the R7, it's more like an F2 to an F2.8. But the Tamron 70 to 200 is, well, a lot sharper, noticeably sharper, like so sharp that you would think you're shooting with an RF L series lens. This is good. Now, is the RF 70 to 200 2.8 better? Probably, and I've never shot with it, but I will tell you a couple of reasons why. I have shot with L series glass. I have the 15 to 35 and the 24 to 70. I shot with L series when it came to EF. They're always sharp. But what makes the Canon RF better? Well, it's lighter than this. This is still a heavy lens. And with the RF version of the 2.8 70 to 200, you don't need this collar of what I understand. People are using without the collar and it is not weighting their tripod down a whole lot. The nice thing about a collar is you can adjust it really quick on the fly on a tripod and shoot vertical and it doesn't take much effort at all. So having a collar on is probably a good idea in most cases if you're using a tripod. But on the go, the RF version is gonna be a lot lighter. But the RF version is like 26 to $2,700 unless you get it refurbished and you can find it around 23 to $2,400 if you find those kind of deals. You can find this lens on Amazon Renewed for about eight, nine hundred dollars or get it brand new for about 11 or 1200 or most sales right now are a thousand dollars. I love the 35 to 150. And what I love about it is the versatility. There's so much you can do in that focal range and I do like it. And yes, it does lack a little bit of sharpness compared to this 70 to 200, but the versatility of this is nice. That being said, I have a 24 to 70 RF 2.8, and that is super sharp and outperforms this constantly with the 2.8. So this can sell used for about six to $700. I'm probably now gonna just do an easy swap, sell this, buy this used, and use this focal length for portraiture and landscape, and probably be pretty happy until I decided to get the RF version. But for me, it's gotta make sense to constantly use this. So instead of just spending $2,700, $2,600 on the RF version, it makes sense for me to do a swap with the other one and buy this and try this out for a while, use it professionally, and if it makes me money and there's a good return on investment, well then getting the RF version will make sense. And honestly, that's exactly how you should be doing it all the time with any of your lenses. Start out with smaller lenses, less expensive lenses, and if you can use those to make money, well then it makes more sense for you to buy the professional version. You don't need to go out and buy professional right away because you might not be getting the business you need. So for me, this is gonna be a great experiment. And plus, this lens is used professionally all the time. Just because Canon does make excellent lenses doesn't mean it is the best option for you. Sometimes it's good to have different looks and not look like everybody else. Am I right? I think I'm right on that one. If this is the type of content you like to see once in a while on the channel, let me know by liking the video because then it kind of lets me know that this is the right path for content that you like. And also I wanna give a shout out to Camera Corner Connecting Point again because, well, I'm not gonna buy those lenses and not know what they're like. So if you're looking at renting lenses before buying, that's probably the smartest route to go. If you live in Wisconsin, Northeast Wisconsin, then Camera Corner Connecting Point does rent these out. But if not, you can go to your local rental place and pick them up. Although it's not fun to spend money renting lenses, it's not fun spending money on a lens that you realize you're not gonna use or enjoy. So it's best to just spend a little bit of money now to realize which one you want. There's a saying out there that says, buy nice or buy twice. And so renting will help you eliminate that buying twice. You will know if you like it and then you'll get the best one for you and not have to go buy another lens just like it a few months down the line. Again, I am Jared Hoyman with visibletour.com and I will see you in the next video. You can click on this video, it's probably gonna be fun. This one will be good too. So either of these, I highly, highly recommend you probably should watch them because YouTube's telling you to. Just do it.